So, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. And it is so good to see you all here today. My name's Helen Wright, and I am part of the ministerial team here at Unity Las Cruces. And our ministerial team includes Reverend Tanya Dawson and Reverend Pat Conway. So, um, a couple of housekeeping things first. Um, of course, remember to silent, silence the cell phones, please. And then I have a short, well, you probably know the verse from Ecclesiastes saying there's a time for everything. Um, so there may well be a time for everything, but this is the time to continue social distancing. And it's not the time for hugging and a lot of you know, personal contact. We just want to keep those safety recommendations in place. So, so welcome to Unity of Las Cruces Hybrid Sunday Service Celebration, where God is good all the time and all are welcome, safe and loved. So it's my honor to bring to you today um, the sp spiritual reading. And today, um, I love this date, it's the 8-8. So it's the Lion's Gate. And um, this is from Meg Benedict, who runs workshops and awareness workshops and things, particularly on the Lion's Gate. She writes, the Lion's Gate portal opens during the rising of the blue star Sirius, the brightest star in the sky, and peaks on August 8th in alignment with the Giza pyramid and the Sphinx coordinates in Egypt. In a spectacular display of light encoded waves stream through the portal and into the earth plane, we're all bathed and blessed with the lion's heart of courage and strength and freedom. Leo the lion is the symbol of the heart center, creativity and personal empowerment. In Giza, the Sphinx represents the magnetic field aligned with the electrical force field in the pyramids, 8-8. Lion's Gate is the celebration of this ancient Lumerian lineage with many light workers carrying within them their soul codes of this bloodline. Dating back to the Syrian seeding in Lemuria and Zetiki, Egypt, many are being activated by dormant key codes waiting for this momentous occasion. The ancient Egyptians celebrated the annual event with the star Sirius aligned with the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx, forming a frequency receptor of celestial light transmission. The Leo Lion's Gate enhances attributes of self-love and personal power. Leo is the sign of strength. In the tarot, the strength card is represented by the lion and the infinity sign. And soul embodiment, increase inner strength, courage, confidence in your daily life. So in numerology, the in infinity sign of the eight is the symbol of balance, union, and infinite abundance. And the eight, eight Lion's Gate galactic event enhances your ability to fully embody the divine soul presence in physical form. The Lion's Gate light transmission will infuse you with more strength, freedom, and the heart of the lion. Sounds good to me. So today's speaker is Reverend Tanya Dawson, and her title is Will and the Deep Hole, From Denial to Action. Uh, she will also be leading an, a meditation following her talk. And then we have special music today with Barry and Max. And that's going to be a special treat today. So the good news today, um, you may remember that last week in our prayers, we held in prayer Tanya's aunt and uncle, Ken and Reba. And um, it's good to report that they are improving. And they're now both in the same medical facility, so they can actually be there to support each other through their healing journey. And that is indeed good news. So let's just take a moment of gratitude. And I'd like to um, 
all of us here at Unity at Las Cruces are so grateful for everyone who enlivens our church, including and especially those behind the scenes, those who attend here live on Zoom and then later on YouTube. And we certainly hold in gratitude and prayer our prayer chaplaincy, uh, the New Thought Prayer Team, the Unity of Las Cruces Board, social media and outreach with Jane Ray, our helpers, our donors, anonymous prayers, musicians, speakers, especially today, Rev. Tanya, uh, Zoom, YouTube, email, the ministry team, and, um, and particularly also uh, Jen Kleitz, who's helping us a lot with the logistics of um, having our secretary and treasurer in Arizona. So thank you, Jen. And on a personal note, I would just like to say, all of you who send in your tithes with such beautiful cards, I really find those cards and those notes inspiring. So thank you for the beautiful cards. So thank you all for raising the vibrations of this universe through your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations. And for allowing that love, that light, that healing love and energy to flow through you all and out to others. So let's just take a moment for our opening prayer. As we breathe, we breathe, we follow that breath within, follow the breath out. <sighs> we let go, we let our shoulders drop a little bit. We let go of any busyness prior to coming to, to this service. We let go and we release in peace. And so this day, we follow up on that beautiful healing energy. We're so grateful for the healing energy, that divine template of our perfect health expressed and manifest in this world. In our prayer consciousness, we let that ripple out around the planet so as we can enfold everyone in that love, that healing love, enfolding every person and every sentient being on the planet with love and healing, divine healing. We're reminded that this is our truth, regardless of any exterior perception or experience or perceived experience. Our truth is that we are divine beings created by creator God. Our truth is that our essential nature is to be whole, to be healed, to be love and light and joy. So this day, this day on the 8-8 Lion's Gate, we invite our own courage, our heart-centered connection to continue to keep our hearts open to giving and receiving love. And again, we know that this is our true nature and we allow that circulation of love, the giving and the receiving. For all this, we are grateful and we give thanks. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And so now I'd like to welcome Dave Aidy with today's Daily Word. Thank you, Helen, and good morning, Unity friends. Morning. Our daily word for this August 8th, 2021, is protected. The affirmation, through my oneness with God, I feel protected. Sometimes I may feel at the mercy of a changing, tumultuous world I cannot control. This is never true, even though the chaos of the world may swirl around me, at the center of my being is a place of perfect peace and calm. Whenever I am in need of a safe refuge, I turn to God. Within, 
to reach this place of tranquility and reclaim my feeling of security and protection. The sun always rises after the longest, darkest night. I remind myself of this truth and feel grateful as I allow the light of spiritual understanding to release and reclaim whatever power I may have unwittingly given to a fear-based thought. Fully in tune with the divine presence within me, I move safely and confidently through every challenging circumstance. And from scripture, 1 John 4, verse 4, the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. And together, please, our affirmation, through my oneness with God, I feel protected. And so it is. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. And now we have our affirmation for unity. So if together we can say this, our intention statement is to create a sacred space where all who enter feel the presence of God, the joy of God, where all feel welcome, safe, and loved. And now it's my great pleasure to be able to introduce to you Reverend Tanya Dawson, who has got some beautiful, inspirational words to share with us. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Helen. Good morning, everybody. Good, morning. Good to see you all and all the folks on Zoom. And we're so glad you're all here, wherever, we, wherever here is. <laughs> And um, I'm so happy to be able to talk to you today about will and the deep hole from denial to action. And we could also add the subtitle, but we didn't. From belligerent self-will to improved alignment of our free will with divine will through our denial of problems or challenges, as well as self-denial. <laughs> so um, buckle your seatbelts. And, uh, and so I want to just say, uh, acknowledge that we all have problems and challenges and blocks to our, uh, that we'd rather not have uh, to our higher good, our highest and best, whether these are personal or closely held secret or perhaps publicly evident. <laughs> our request for spiritual growth calls for our willingness to be willing, to release the old patterns, stubbornly held gunk, and any denial holding us back to replace with new understanding and move to recognition and awareness, listening to our divine guidance through our intuition and that we may allow, accept and flourish in our own personal spiritual freedom and successes in whatever form that we choose to manifest them. Let's have a, do we have a slide? Let's have the first slide, which I uh, forgot to mention. Okay, saw that one. Happiness. Now for slide two. All righty. Yes, now you can buckle your seatbelts for sure uh, as, as you check out some of those uh, that you may or may not recognize for yourself or others. Today we're getting real. We're going to roll up our sleeves and we're talking about the processes, mostly internal, that we go through to let go of stubborn spiritual blocks in the form of personal problems or challenges, some lifelong and replace them with our highest and best. It all starts with our willingness to be willing. As we begin this morning with how, uh, our, how we deny our problem even exists, that's how we're, uh, we're gonna begin with. Denial is a big part of the talk today uh, and, and we use our will to manage this and as you see when, as we keep going. So whatever problem, what problem or challenge uh, are you in denial about? Addicted to drama, substance, or a pattern of behavior? Perhaps unwilling to make a change, a much needed change, perhaps in relationship, 
career, a move, or some other, or someone you know who is going through a difficult time along those lines. So I ask you to think about this as we go along through the talk and in the meditation as well, which won't be very long since the talk is oh, about three hours. Is that okay? <laughs> oh, oh, no, not, not quite. I do want to add something here real quick, though. Um, 35 years ago, uh, Reverend David, who's on Zoom, reminded me the other day, uh, I was ordained this month, and uh, 35 years ago. And as a part of the ordination, we were required at that time to come up with 42 outlines for talks so that when you started your own church, you were good to go for quite a while. And uh, so this talk today is from that out from one of the outlines that I actually was writing in June of that year. And in that, at the time, I personally was living with an alcoholic addict. And I was going through as a, a person um, uh, in that position, trying to decide what to do and in the denial of, of the throes of things. And so as you hear some of the things I go through, you'll understand uh, where I was and, and how I still use and notice these uh, things within myself in, in things as I go through uh, challenges today or, or, or uh, some big thing I, I know I, I get to do, but here we are. First of all, I wanna begin and we'll stay with it for quite some time talking about denial. When we're in denial, we pretend the problem doesn't exist, don't we? No matter how awkward things seem, uh, things seem or how out of balance, how out of kilter, we engage in, in uh, excuse making. Now we, we do this uh, because we don't want to believe it. Engage in desperate efforts to make things right, usually with confused emotions and illogic logic <laughs> because we're not thinking right. And we also engage in hiding, hiding the fact. Uh, you know, uh, we're embarrassed because of the situation or of, of something we're on, our own selves are doing. Not letting anyone know, even ourselves sometimes or usually, uh, how things really are, until finally we realize something is wrong. But we don't want to admit it, and we don't want to see it, so we, we don't want to, uh, we don't have the will to see and believe, accept and allow and change. We are uh, in deep denial. I know some people call it kimchi, but it's really deep denial. <laughs> So when we're in denial, we're running from problems. Let's have another slide, why don't we? We're running from problems. And it also means running from self. We are, um, let's go to another slide there. Yes. And, and we're afraid. Now, some of you have seen this, fear, forget everything and run. You might have seen it in a different uh, way. I kind of like uh, face everything and rise. Face everything and rise. Thank you. Next slide, please. Okay. So now I'd like to say, here we go. Uh, I want to talk about how we, we, we perceive that we have no control over power. Now let's go to the next slide. There we go. So lack of power. That's, that's kind of one of the things that we go, that's what we definitely go through because we, we are... Um, we're sure that, that whatever's going on, we've tried everything and it's not working. And so we, we feel like we just don't have power over this. So that this is actually a first sign of, of the, one of the first signs of denial and the challenge and its effects of it. So we, it, it is, what happens with this is we displace our power. Our, we displace our ability to and responsibilities. And we, we move we look at it like we don't have... Um, these are all caused by external circumstances, not our doing. And so that takes away our power when we think that way. We believe we have no effect on our own circumstances and our energy begins to wane, gradually being siphoned off. Yeah, you know, like our confidence, you know, our strength, our will, enthusiasm and power. We, it, it's what it feels like. It's waning. We stop believing in ourselves sometimes. We even begin to question the effectiveness of our own abilities and other people's abilities. And so we're like this, we get to that point where we say, no one can help me. I can't, and no one else can either. It's a, it's a, it's a sad place to be. So we're going to move through that. We want to, we want to realize that that is actually uh, 
what would we call it? an illusion, wouldn't we, Dave? When we are in a denial, we are unable to see the solution. So what we, we, nothing we do makes, uh, makes a difference, it seems, in all of our attempts to toward change. So we're losing our desire and enthusiasm, and we want to get that back. And our lives become kind of disorderly, don't they? We, we, we start saying things fall apart. And I, I don't, I, fall apart is sort of a, uh, is not the word I'm looking for, but fall apart it is, where we see that, uh, you know, things are, the coffee table has begun to fill with things and the, the counters and, you know, are, you, all these things are we finding that ourselves out of order. This is part of the, of the hitting a bottom of the denial. And it, and it tends to reinforce the idea that we really aren't in control we're, and we're a victim of the world. It reinforces that victim uh, mentality. Next, I, I'm back with my, with some people can't see it, the, the one pointer here. It's easier to do nothing. So this is part of denial, isn't it? Have we, do we all know this one? It's easier to do nothing. Okay, uh, this is a boat, a situation. We don't want to shake it. We don't, we're familiar with it, but we don't, uh, we, we're, not, we're not comfortable. However, we do feel like it's safer than the unknown because not making a change. In my case, I, I knew I was gonna have to make a change and, and thank I did, God I did eventually make that change. But this is the place, it's safer to be where I was than the unknown, it seemed. It was, it was uh, and also an, an illusion. That's what denial does for us. Feeling numb toward ourselves and others. We can start thinking in extremes, right? So there's a, the unknown future is scary. And then we have the big butt syndrome. And I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about, I can't, uh, but I can't do that because of this. Uh, you know, fear may be more powerful than the pain. And, and I, I'd like, can, can we see the slide again? All right, all uh, right, uh, and what I call freeze frame paralysis takes hold. It, you know, it's easier to do nothing. Not only that, but I, you know, we can't maybe not feel like we can do anything because of the of the pain or just feeling paralyzed because we don't have and know a solution and we're hiding it and all those things are happening at the same time. And then we start to feel guilty, and that's what I'm showing you here. Uh, it's like uh, we feel it's our fault, and um, and we manage to bear ourselves quite well under a mountain of guilt, and and we become guilt guilt experts. And I don't need to go down that road because we all know what that feels like and what it is. Next, please. We and we do what I call false acceptance, and we're accepting my lot in life. I I, I know we've all heard this, and some of us may have heard it more depending on where we grew up, which is. Uh, believing the erroneous idea that this is the life fate has dealt me. <laughs> and so uh, I might as well make the best of it. Uh, I've heard that many times in my life uh, from uh, other people. And speaking of other people, there are people in our lives we have, uh, and they are also afraid of change. So things that they tell us then reinforce the idea of not making change, reinforce the idea of, of uh, staying where we are. And that's, because of their own fears and things like that. So we, we want to keep that in mind as we move forward out of a situation that trust to trust our intuition and we're reaching for that place where we can do that. And the next thing we might experience is the final outrage. I call it the final outrage. It's like everyone has a breaking point, like, like uh, I don't know, something that a, a number on the, on the scale that you saw or how you how the next you know so many days in a row that you got sick because you ate a thing you know sort of that kind of thing um and in the situation i was in uh, i there were some lines that got crossed that i finally said that's it the final outrage so it's unique to everyone and it doesn't have to make sense logically or even emotionally uh it means that we have we have uh uh this line has been crossed and it, and it has brought forth us in us this, this energy. Finally, the energy is starting to move forward. And in, in this case, it may show up as anger or, or, or outrage, but it's enough. It's enough to inject us with strength and the will to, to even if we just peek out, peek out from our safe cave and if even for a moment. And that's, that's enough. That may be just enough. But at this point, we may know 
we may allow ourselves uh, this, the positive words of change to sort of seep in or the seeds to find their way into some fertile soil inside of us. And we, we come to this place where we might even have a realization to wake up. If not, we may have the realization to forgive ourselves for being in the situation. And I'd like to just say, read these. Forgive, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. As, or as Reverend Marcia Zimmerman, a UFC minister, uh, writes, and I love it, ignite forgiveness of self as we ignite forgiveness in others. Isn't that beautiful? Next. Ah, the groundhog takes a peek. So the groundhog peeks up, has a safe, happy hall, and takes a peek. And if, at, if after the final outrage is experienced, and we do not rush right out to take charge to meet our challenge, sometimes well, the best that we can do is do this peeking up and see uh, a, a more realistic view than the one we had before. Because now we have more understanding. We're kind of we have a little gumption that that anger, though maybe not a place we want to stay, has given us an oomph up into okay. Now I can see outside this dreamlike fog that I've been in, and we speak, maybe we snap out of it and see some truth. Any decision, and due to the benefit of having experienced our groundhog moment and our and our final outrage. We, pour, we, uh, we become aware of an impending need to make a decision. Well, in my case, there was like no, no kidding, uh, Sherlock. Uh, we, we definitely knew there was change that had to be made. And, uh, but uh, it was scary. It was still scary. And, and, and so there's this dance that happens. Uh, denial and got to do it. Denial and got to do it kind of thing. And, and it's easier to do nothing. It is easier for me in that position. I, I stayed longer than I should have. Inner, or also let's say it this way, until I got my lessons. So I learned many lessons and still do, still learning them. I might have some inner dialogue or we, we, we at this point might have inner dialogue uh, asking ourselves, what should we do? And what would I do? What would other people think? Boy, that was a big one. Yeah, I didn't want everyone knowing I was married to someone like that. And this situation was so, so un unfortunate. Uh, what if I make a mistake? What if, what if it was salvageable after all? You know, the feeling. So thank you. We didn't even close that slide. Oh, you did. Thank you. So I did this back and forth dance, recognizing and understanding that, but not admitting. We must decide at some point. And at this point, I want to show you the poem, next slide, that I based this entire uh, outline and talk off of. And it's called Autobiography in short, Five Short Chapters. Chapter one, I walk down the street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in, I am lost, I'm helpless. It isn't my fault. It takes forever to find a way out. Chapter two, I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I still don't see it. I fall in again. I can't believe I'm in the same place. It isn't my fault. It still takes a long time to get out. Chapter three. I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it there. I still fall in. It's a habit. It's my fault. I know where I am. I get out immediately. I walk, chapter four. I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. Chapter five. I walk down a different street. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We do have some handouts of that poem if you don't have one of your own. Thank you so much. And I want to ask this question for all of us online and sitting here today. How many of us have stayed in our holes so long we decorated? <laughs> yeah, baby. Thank you. Next slide, please. So we call upon the power of our will, the willingness to be willing sometimes. We have to sneak up on it. Sometimes we don't have that will right yet, but we start praying for the will, willingness of having that will. Uh, how many have done that? I, I have to confess myself to doing that quite a lot still. 
you know, it, it gets me to that place of openness. Thank you. Willingness, uh, willingness to succeed over the beyond, over and beyond the, the problem and the denial. What is, what is beyond but meta, like metaphysics, beyond physics? So we're, we're, we're succeeding over this, beyond. Next slide, please. Now enter in metaphysics. We are lucky, blessed, however you want to put it, graced to have and be metaphysicians, to have metaphysics in our lives and be metaphysicians, that we have tools that we can use to move our way through any problems or challenges. And that, that becomes in the form of thoughts, words, and actions primarily. Thoughts, words, and actions. Those are our tools. That is our basics. The universe, our bodies, our lives are listening with every thought, word, and action. And, and uh, we can use these in the dismantling of denial. So exciting. Are we excited yet? So we want to use affirmations in the form of, of thoughts and words and actions as well. But let's focus on thoughts and words. We create opportunities for change. It causes things to happen. And sometimes that means breaking down. And sometimes that breaking down period feels kind of miserable, doesn't it? Sometimes you're like, we're in the, the stage of transition and we're maybe our feet, our footing doesn't feel as sure and so on like that. So, we're, but guess what's happening at that time? We're releasing, we're releasing, we're releasing and we're preparing for replacing Next slide, please. I want to talk about affirmations. First, I'm going to talk about affirmations without action. So affirmations without action, that's like, that's like the willingness to be willing. We're moving. We're, we're getting things going. We're, we're out of denial about this. We're, we're saying these things. We're, 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 we're talking ourselves into or out of, right? We are talking ourselves. We're affirming the universe in our lives is working. And, we, and these are powerful. They are powerful. And affirmations with action, well, that's even more powerful. It would continue the breaking down process, but that's okay. And we, we're, it promotes concrete change, doesn't it? You start seeing things actually happening. Every little bit helps to bring order and harmony. And positive change is, affects every aspect of our life. Think about all the powers within us, all the power centers being affected by how we are, whether we're in denial or moving forward. And we are, our actions include prayers. Prayers and action. It's also words, but it's an action. You're taking an action to do these things. Visualizations and moving. Movement in the physical world. Every action makes a difference. Think of the, the, uh, the kinetic energy from moving things with all these tools, thoughts, words, and actions from the invisible to the visible. Order. Order. Do we have order in our life when we're in positions like that? Some things are not so orderly, are they? So we want to generate order. We want to have the will, bring our will together with order. And sometimes that means straightening out order in our life. It could be the kitchen table or the coffee table. It could be that we're preparing the heart. Let's, let's have some preparing of the heart. There we go. And, we're, and we want to we want to maybe do some, uh, let's say, junk mail and, and, and email and, and maybe uh, sort our calendars out and take stuff out that we don't really want to do and don't bring joy. And we want to invite, allow, and accept divine order. Remember that when we have external order, we also have internal order. And remember the as above, so below. Next slide, please. And remember, drum roll, Hermes Trismegistus, as above, so below. Thank you, Ken. Hmm. Willingness to be willing and the will to action. Uh, this is, uh, so here we go. 
Got to be, so now we have our order. It, it, what's happened with, we brought some order in, may not have been a lot, but it had been enough to show us what we did need to straighten out, right? It kind of, all the big chunks start to show up because there's not so many little ones hanging around. It creates more self-confidence, more strength, more, and the will to do more, to make decisions, take action, and accept more divine order in our lives. These things don't disappear. Order didn't disappear. We stopped seeing it and stopped feeling it and stopped allowing it. Remember, every action, even the smallest, makes a difference. And positive action moves us closer to our goals and sustaining them. So the, the momentum, keeping the momentum of the energy moving in the direction of the solution that we were looking for. And we, we ask ourselves again, what, what do we want? What do I want? What do I want in my life? Do I want prosperity, which is, which is happiness, health, and plenty? What would it take to bring health, happiness, and plenty into my life? And we, we uh, take a look at it one step at a time because we don't want to get overwhelmed because what happens then was we rush back into denial and back into that safe hole and become the groundhog hiding in there. We want to ask ourselves, what is God calling for me through my intuition. I found this in the, this quote here. It was, uh, it was in the, the uh, Science of Mind Daily Guides this last week. And I, I, I like to read that in, a in conjunction with the Daily Word. And this is attributed to Anonymous, but it's so perfect I have to share it. Only as high as I reach can I grow. Only as far as I seek can I go. Only as deep as I look can I see. Only as much as I dream can I be. We are dreamers. Next slide, please. Chapter five, I walk down another street. Yay! Now that we have passed the final denial stage, let's have a plan. Oh, Let's not freak out about it, though, because we don't want to have freeze frame analysis, paralysis happen again. You know, just because someone says plan doesn't mean you have to run away or making a list. Yes, making a list. Don't run away. It's OK. We're going to do it. One, we're going to do it like willingness, willingness to sneak up on it. So you can use pencil. <laughs> All right. Get a big old fat eraser. And you can, you can write these down and erase them. You can move them around. And also for, for, uh, their, for their, the people who don't like lists, can't, can't, their minds and brains don't work with lists, try circle drawings and, and flow charts, that kind of thing. Whatever makes you happy, as long as it's you or you feel like you're moving forward in your plan, the way your plan wants to be in your life. So again, we can move it around. It doesn't have to be concrete. And we want to ask ourselves at this point again, and many times after, what do we want? And what do we want to do? What is our solution? Do we have a solution? Can we see clearly now and have a solution? Even if we can't, maybe we have some ideas that might take us toward a solution. We, we want to make this list or circle drawing, whatever, manageable, realistic, but optimistic. We want to be able to uh, have it at a, begin at a high level so we're not getting into the weeds of things. Let's do that next. We, we want to say uh, our imagination. We want to use our imagination. We want to allow big thinking here at this high level. And even at the ground level, at the ground level, we're going to do maybe some smaller things like, okay, I know I need to do something. I'm going to call so-and-so. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to the library and get a book on this. You know, these are the kinds of things I'm talking about. They're not scary. It's, it's what I, I tell people and use myself, the stage of what I call data gathering. This is a non-threatening place to go. And it's really educational and it brings a lot of confidence and, 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 and courage into our being. And after we do this ground level list, list or, or circle drawing, we want to weed it out the things that we don't, again, again we don't want. We want to prioritize them. Now, this, this one doesn't matter. I can do that next month. This one here, I go, I have to do right away. And what else do we do? We build into the plan self-care. Because even, the, even a watchdog gets a break from duty, right? And we believe that we are worthy of this. Part of self-care. We, be, we, we have we've become aware that we are worthy 
We can do this. We, we are worth it. And we want to have fun. We want to have fun and we want to have some humor in there. And we want to ask ourselves, does this make me feel better? Does I, does I feel better doing this? And find things that we like about the process, about ourselves and, and the, the feeling that we get that we're moving forward out of denial and into a better place. This help us bring us closer to our, our manifesting our solution, decision-making and forgiving ourselves and others, a, a constant thing that we, that we do. Because what happens with this is it's a humongous part of releasing to make a place for replacing. And we put the plan into action. We do the easiest thing first because that way it doesn't scare us back into our hole and, and bring about what I call the big bad P procrastination. Anybody have that? Big bad P. And we, so we do this one thing at a time. Again, we've said that before, but it's important. One thing at a time. We give ourselves credit for every action we take and we use what? Affirmations, visualizations, prayer, all kinds of tools that we have because of, of, the, of the grace of being metaphysicians. We have these tools available and we strive for that momentum because we want to keep it. Doesn't mean you can't take a nap. Doesn't mean you don't have a day off. It means that we keep the momentum going. This is our, this is our vision. This is our dream. This is our solution that we're moving toward. And we're bringing our will and, and activating all the, the centers in our being to continue the, this momentum. Keep the energy, the love flowing. Next slide, please. Okay. <laughs> And so this is, this is part of my recap, okay? Uh, I wanted to say that we recognize uh, that uh, every problem has a final straw. We talked about that in the final outreach. Uh, every, every problem has its final straw. And this is a quote from Reverend David, who's on Zoom today. Hi, David. <laughs> Let's take care of the straws in our lives. We don't want to have them pile up in such a way that one more takes us down, right? So let's take care of those straws. By being honest with ourselves, the, that the, the not, and when you do that, when we do that, we're honest with ourselves, the denial stage is shortened or maybe even eradicated. And we know thyself. Once we have finally accepted the existence of our challenge, we give ourselves time to see it for what it really is. Forgive ourselves, forgive others. And this may be a, a, a sneak up process as well. Sometimes, it's, it takes a little while to work into that forgiveness of others and ourselves. So it's not like a, it's not like the big etch a sketch in the sky. You can shake it and everything's cool. Uh, sometimes it is. And sometimes it, there might be some hanger owners. <clears throat> and again, I want to remind us that we, as to allow change, we also need to bring in our 12 powers, especially the will to keep our momentum moving forward and to align our will with divine. So let, speaking of which, let's go to the next slide. So it says self will, self and divine will alignment. You can also read this as free will and God's will alignment. Does that, does that ring for you guys? So what, as we move forward, and I have a thing I can read easier from here, we see, we see and, and feel things differently, don't we? By changing our thoughts. This helps us to recognize and release. We use our words or actions to change, forgive, and replace. Well, we speak, we write, share, pray, affirm, visualize. Taking action also means sometimes calling another person, being, being humble enough to say, look, I could use your insight here. I'm fumbling. And we replace all that, all of that with, with goodness uh, opens up our intuition. We accept, allow, and receive. And that intuition and that will, all of that comes into alignment, brings us closer into alignment, our will with, with divine will. And the next slide, please. So a friend of mine heard me say this, and um, her name is Sarah, and she she decided to illustrate it, and I'm going to read this to you today. I know I have to go through it to leave it behind. Ignoring and denying it didn't work. I have to keep going forward. That's the way my feet point. We can do it, 
And we're worth it. Thank you. Now, you remember I asked you about, hello, everything's falling, uh, to keep it at, at what in your life or in someone you know's life uh, you could you think of to uh, as we went through the talk. And now as we go through the meditation, the short meditation, I would like to ask you to, to bring this back into your mind. Take in a deep breath. And as we relax with our breathing in and out, we know that our bodies and our power centers are activated. We are relaxed. And as we re continue relaxing, let's bring in some willingness. Willingness to recognize release, and replace. Let us just today bring in willingness to move forward out of any challenge that we may have. Let's breathe in that willingness. Let's begin by activating the life center moving up the spine and our abdomen, chest, all the way up so that from the tips of our toes, every power center, each one is activated. We are allowing, allowing movement of energy, life, order, power, Enthusiasm, will, understanding, all of these, all of them activated in our lives. And as we acknowledge our willingness and our intuition opens, then we can see ideas forming in our minds, in our hearts. Intuition is talking to us. It is the divine speaking to us through our intuition, showing us the way, the path. Recognize, release, and replace. Breathe in. And know that as we move forward in our week ahead, we bring the solutions back with us in our consciousness, in our energy, in our enthusiasm, in our creativity. And we are energized, literally energized, to take charge and make change and share the love. Not only with our own lives, but those in our lives and around the world, that they too have the clarity and the willingness to act accordingly with their intuition and divine will as it emerges. And so it is. I would like to to say a quick word about the music today. Uh, I'm so honored and touched to be here with Mary and Max singing uh, a special song and to music that, that actually very wrote. Oh, 
I fall in, I am lost, I am helpless, it isn't my fault, it takes forever to find a way out. down the same street there is a deep hole in the sidewalk i pretend i don't see it i fall in again i can't believe i am in the same place but it isn't my fault it still takes a long time to get out. I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it is there, I still fall in, it's a habit. My eyes are open, I know where I am, it's my fault. I get out immediately. around it. I walk down another street. Yay! Excellent. Thank you, guys. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. So thank you, thank you for the music and thank you, Tanya, for such an amazing talk. I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. So now let's join together in our prayer for faith. God is my help in every need. God does my every hunger feed. God dwells within me, guides my way, through every moment, night and day. I now am wise, I now am true, patient, kind and loving too. All things I am, can do and be, through Christ the truth that is in me. God is my help, I can't be sick. God is my strength, unfailing, quick. God is my all, I know no fear, since God and love and truth are here. Amen. And next, our weekly tithe this week is going to the United Fellowship Chapel, as we so appreciate the inspiration that that Tanya gains through the, through the United Fellowship Chapel and Jen too, and uh, David who's on the call. So we are very, very grateful that we're able to, to share this tide and this abundance. Um, our, I think I'm talking about envelopes and tides, that there are many different ways to tie and we do have envelopes uh, over by the table and over by that chair that you could put um, cash or donate donations in to keep them anonymous or put your name on the front because that helps 
So there's envelopes and uh, our prosperity affirmation as we're thinking about our tides is um, divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive and I am grateful. And so it is. And then our, our tithe over there, I just invite Reverend Pat to come and bless the tithe for today. Oh, blessed spirit, we do give thanks for all of the people who provide such inspiration and hope and care for us. For all those who speak and sing and write music, for all of us everywhere on the planet who give and care and continue to give and care. We are blessed beyond any words can ever express. And we are grateful. So it is. Thank you. So we've got quite a few announcements today. I can't see my page for announcements. So um, do we have slides for the announcements? So, so next uh, Sunday, we have Lillian Pilot, and she'll be talking to us about continuing our um, exploration of will. So, why the use of will? Will I or won't I? And uh, she'll be speaking. Her words are always inspirational, so we look forward to that. And... The Daily Word on Wednesdays continues, so it's a separate Zoom link. Um, it's in our email, and you're all very welcome to join on 9.30 on Wednesday mornings to explore that day's Daily Word. And we have our speakers for August. Um, the next week, Lillian. Then the following week, we have um, Reggie. Reverend Roger Butts, I can't say that quickly. And uh, he's truly inspirational with a background of Unitarian Universalism and unity. So he brings to us a, a great wealth of experience. And then at the end of the month, we have Reverend Pat Conway with Where There's a Will, There's a Way. So we're looking forward to that too. The um, school supply drive continued. So that continues through August 12th, and um, that's benefiting my friend's place. And they're really needing all school items of notebooks, notebook paper, spiral notebooks, pencils, pens, folders, backpacks. And these can be dropped off here at CSL. Monday through Thursday is best, 9.30 through 1 o'clock. Or call ahead just to check that Lisa is here, or Teresa, Venezuela. Um, has her contact number that you can contact if you're not able to physically bring donations. So we still have some sheets over there. I'm still doing one of these. We would still love to have your ideas. This is sort of breaking out of the box and seeing what else you would love to see as part of the community of last users. So please, please, please. Um, it's wonderful to have us have some feedback and some new ideas. Good for slides. Okay, so our ongoing uh, announcements is that um, reminder to tell you under the New Thought Education Fund, and if you have any um, workshops or books or personal educational needs, uh, just email you the at gmail.com, attention board of trustees. And the placeholder for the October 17th is the Reverend Terry Dunn 
celebration of life. And there'll be more information as we get a little closer. Uh, in addition to this special time at the moment for school supplies, we have three levels back of CSL now by the office there. There's the um, toilet pads and pumps ongoing collection, and then there is a food barrel ongoing collection, and there is a pet uh, barrel for food um, and pet related items. So we have a slide, I think, that went into the newsletter as well. And uh, I will just take that. This, for the first quarter, this quarter, we're going to donate that to, um, oh, blank on the name, Act. Action Programme for Animals. So I will get the, they really are always in need of food supplies um, for pets, dogs and cats. Um, so then we have uh, congratulations because Reverend Carolyn Hutchins uh, for her one year anniversary of Inspirational Ministries. Uh, congratulations to our sister and youth thought center here in Unity of in Hearing Las Cruces. So I believe now it is time for Ken for an announcement. Morning, everybody. Good to see you all. It's been a while since I've been up here. I'll just do a little manual labor here. Thank you very much. All right. I just wanted to share with you, we have, the board has gotten together. Um, I made a proposal to the board and the board has all agreed that based on the current situation involving COVID and the spikes and everything that's going around you, this is going to be our last live service for a couple of weeks. What we're going to do is we're going to take a little break and go back to Zoom full time. We've done it before. You guys have hopefully seen us on there and we're going to take a pulse every couple of weeks and see where we are. This is with an abundance of caution. Right now, we are in a good place. We'd like to keep that. Everybody is healthy. Everyone is cooperating and doing everything necessary to keep everybody else safe and healthy and happy. Unfortunately, we're not the only ones that live in this building. We have a lot of stuff going on around us in the public, and we need to make sure that we are doing everything we can from a unity perspective to keep ourselves healthy and maintain a way of life that we have gotten used to. Uh, with This is our sixth Sunday in a row we've been going to do the live services and we're very happy to do that. And personally, I love the live services versus Zoom, but Zoom is giving us an opportunity we wouldn't otherwise have in a situation as this has happened 25, 30 years ago, we would have been not lost in the weeds, which this capability did not exist that, not that far long ago. But here we are. We want to stay healthy and we want you guys to be aware of this and we want you guys to understand we will be back live at some point, hopefully in some very near future, but we have to take a little cautionary break and make sure everybody stays healthy, okay? Um, for those folks who don't have the ability to do Zoom, maybe you've procured a computer in the last couple of weeks and you want to try it out, I'm willing to get together with anybody who wants some assistance on Thursday or another day of the week, if that helps you to do a trial run with Zoom. We'll set it all up, we'll use the same Zoom code, we'll walk through everything you need, get online and make sure you have the ability to come to a Zoom service if you want to do so. If you want to do that, send an email to the Unity of Las Cruces Gmail account and say, I want help with Zoom and I will do everything I can to get together with you and we'll do everything we can to make sure you have the ability to log on and make yourself Part of, the, part of the process, okay? Uh, I got some notes here. Thank you, Tanya. Um, we are also, like I said, we're gonna be taking a pulse there. There was an issue down in Unity of Texas. I'm gonna let you guys uh, know that there was a COVID, um, I wouldn't say outbreak, but there was a COVID exposure to some folks down at a Unity in, in Texas, and they are taking a break. They had to take some time off. They had to do some cleanup, they had to do this because they were, they were doing everything they possibly could, but Things happen, life goes on, everything is gonna be okay with everyone down there, but we wanna take a little more precautionary measures up here. That's all I wanted to say. Uh, we appreciate everybody coming. You're doing a great job and we want you to keep coming back, please. Um, just stay strong and healthy. We'll hopefully be back before you know it. So our next Sunday will be on Zoom only. So if you show up here, there won't be anybody here until CSL's coming back. But uh, please let us know. Uh, we're on email. We'll, we check that regularly. We we'll want to make sure that we're with you guys. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ken. And uh, 
We were aligned with the uh, Unity Chapel in Unity Village. Um, this week, they're going to take a break too. They're going back to Zoom for the same reason. So, we're aligned. So, I think um, we, I know that we need to be moving out by about 10.15 to allow the meditators in. So, I think just continue to honour yourselves at home and I thought the messages today were beautiful in terms of we know where our protection is. We know our source of protection is within, is divine. So uh, let us move into our prayer for protection and the peace song. So the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well.